Oh, hello everyone to a new chapter. This is the fourth chapter of Voices of Halt. Uh, today's guest is going to be our Dean Frederick. He has been part of the whole family. Uh, he's turning 16 years as part of the whole family this month. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, today he's going to be telling us about his personal life, professional life. He has been an uh, international student like mostly of the people here. So um, welcome to the podcast, Dean Frederick. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Lydia and Raphael, for the opportunity. Of course. Um, so um, can you tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, so um, I was born and raised in Paris, France, but I had the chance to travel very young. Uh, my father was sent uh, to work uh, in the United States, so that was my first uh, encounter with the U.S. I was six years old, and we stayed there three years. Um, at that age, you learn languages very quickly, so this may explain why my uh, accent in English is not typically French. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's thanks to that, uh, that um, time that I spent uh, over there. Fell in love with the country. Uh, nonetheless, we went back to Paris. So I did all the end of my elementary and all my uh, uh, middle and high school in France. Mm -hmm. And then went back to college and uh, graduate school uh, in Texas at the University of Texas at Austin um, which was another fantastic um, experience. I was an international student and um, uh, left Paris, was raised in a very um, sort of upper middle, fairly conservative um, school, and, uh, you know, all white, all boys, um, same religion and so mm -hmm. on. And <laughs> all of a sudden I arrive in this huge university, uh, 40,000 students with people from uh, all over the place. And it was, wow, an incredible, incredible experience. So that was the first time uh, that, in a way, like you come across with all the different cultures. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And uh, before, like, uh, in France, uh, what would you... What was your path in France? Why did you choose to leave Paris and go back to America? Because of that uh, previous experience as a child, I was fascinated and wanted mm -hmm. to go back. Okay, so literally so America got you. Absolutely, Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You fell in love with America, mm -hmm. but how come if Paris is like the love city? Yeah, right? <laughs> Lots of people well, I mean, it is still the oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest cities in the world, and I always enjoy going back. Um, uh, but um, now my life is here. I've been in Boston for 22 years now. So, um, you know, another long uh, journey in as an adult this time uh, in the United States, but still remain very French culturally um, and um, will always be so French, even though Boston is my home. Sure. So you came back to America at what age, more or less? Um, so my third stay, so as I said, there yep. was a student um, at university. I came back at age 46. Oh, okay. Right. So middle age. And now uh, you are also a dad, right? I am a dad of two boys who are 29 and 27, yes. Now, they are American, for sure. <laughs> 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 you can tell it from the culture yeah. itself. <laughs> Yeah, no, but here there are so many international students at yes. HALT. I mean, like, I always say so, and I will definitely repeat it even this time. HALT itself, uh, it's a world, literally, all inside one building. So, like, the cross-cultural that you were saying before, like, you have experienced uh, even in Texas, here is, uh, is it the same it has It has, uh, uh, for sure, changed my life, shaped my life, uh, that uh, experience of living abroad and that experience later of uh, being of meeting um, students um, who are my age but came from so many different countries yes uh, absolutely shaped my life shaped my identity in many ways and um, it's been um, extremely helpful also in my uh, professional career I wanted actually to add on yes, this. Thank you. <laughs> like, how did this <coughs> happen, and how did this add anything, like from your professional career? Well, for one thing, when I, I was back in Paris and looking for uh, a job, and uh, uh, went naturally to uh, knock on the doors of foreign companies, uh, primarily American, 
British and Canadian banks uh, looking for a job, which I eventually got at a bank that was called the First National Bank of Boston, mm. ironically, um, that had a subsidiary, uh, should I say, a branch in Paris. And I felt very, very at ease in that uh, American environment uh, and got to meet also people from different countries there because it was a worldwide network of uh, subsidiaries in Argentina, in Brazil, all over Europe, in, uh, in Asia. So I got to also uh, meet uh, professionals from all over the world. And of course, that experience as a child and as a student uh, of being uh, comfortable in this international setting was, uh, was huge. And I think gave me uh, a great asset over my, my, uh, my French peers. Yes, and I think we are all right now doing exactly the same. We're just sharing um, our careers and our experiences, meeting a lot of people from all around the world. I know you that are watching us are from all around the world, future students, great students, alumni, faculty who's watching yes. us. They're all around the world yeah. and probably our friends. Future friends, probably. <laughs> um, um, but can you tell us also uh, a little bit more about like how um, you started? Join, oh, how how was your story joining the uh, Hold family? I, I heard your story, and I would love you to share that challenge that you got at the beginning and look at us now. I was I was um, um, already teaching at the time um, at another um, school, and I was approached by um, the Holt uh, dean at the time who must have seen my profile um, and LinkedIn, saw, s and LinkedIn <laughs> saw that it was quite international, and uh, that's what uh, attracted him to contact me. And uh, my, my first, when I walked into Holt, um, the entire Holt institution consisted in two classrooms, uh, 100 MBA students on the fifth floor of this building here at Alt Center. Yes. Uh, that was 16 years ago. Yeah, so yes. you yeah. see literally, you saw literally S all the different growing that Halt experienced. Oh, uh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, to be honest, I, I, I wasn't that impressed the first time that I came, you know. <laughs> I mean, what is this tiny little school? And uh, I would have never expected that uh, it um, had this uh, ambitious path to, 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 to growth. And uh, I was, I'm so fortunate to be a part of that experience. Yeah, that's why we call the whole DNA, I would say. Um, and it's since the beginning that when we started being here just on the fifth floor, and now we have, I think, three buildings here. We do. And how many campuses we have? We have uh, five, if we include Ash Ridge, right? We have Boston, San Francisco, uh, London, Dubai, and more recently, uh, Ash Ridge House outside of London. And a lot of students, for sure. <laughs> and about 5,000 students, so right. and yes. counting, of course. Right? Yes. And so many programs. And indeed, like, you were... Um, international student uh, yeah. and uh, now like right now there are so many students uh, that uh, want to talk to you and I actually personally impressed how close you are to students um, that's amazing usually like deans uh, are not that close today we had a club fair and uh, I saw Dean Frederick going every single word saying hi to everyone remembering everyone's name and when there is an event as well because here at HALT we do have several events for different cultures, celebrating different um, activities, different uh, festivities, <coughs> and uh, always, you know, all the faculty, I would say, is very engaged. So, like, keeping this motivation and then uh, setting the example from, like, this faculty uh, staff as well, and then, like, bringing it to, uh, to the students is very impressive, so... Well, yeah, yeah and I, I, I would say that my experience as a professor being... In the classroom with students, um, you know, I I took that with me as a dean, and and like uh, uh, talking to to students, like to know a little yes. bit about their background, and uh, it's it's very interesting, and and uh, it's 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 great. It it keeps me young, so to speak. <laughs> so, <laughs> Go ahead. since uh, you are this close to all the students, what would be like one tip that you would give to a student that is currently? Your at Halt. 
if you were a student? Oh, yeah. I would, I would uh, you know, as, aside from the academic uh, aspect, which is, mm -hmm. you know, which is challenging and, and uh, you know, going to class, doing the work, but um, take every opportunity to, uh, you know, mingle with students, make, make friends, of, uh, l learn about them, learn about their backgrounds, um, travel with them, discover New England. I mean, I think that's, that's what I would do because it's, it's the opportunity, right, to, to, to do that. I remember one day I was uh, in a room right next to this one and I was just doing homework and assignments and Dean Ferrick knocked my door and he, he just came in to ask me how I was, how I was school, and I just like was chatting with him. And Dean Ferry gave me a huge list, maybe 10 different places <laughs> where I could just go on the weekends, uh, plans for three days, two days, one day. And I was like, wow, how could I ever imagine? I could never imagine my Dean was coming to me and make me plans <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> no worries. We're going to add all of those tips in the description of this yes. episode. No worries. <laughs> You're going to have it as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 important, you know, because after that, you know, we start working, and there are uh, other so much things, other things on our agenda that uh, it's the time to uh, take advantage of that. But more more generally, you know, as I said, the the fact of that we are so international um, is something that is going to shape your lives. I mean, not just professionally, but personally. Uh, and I always say, I mean, it sounds a bit trivial perhaps or uh, perhaps a bit too romantic, but I think that, um, you know, students, people who have this experience, when they go back to their countries, have such an open mind. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should experience that because there will be a lot less wars and problems in this world if we all were able to do have this experience. I do have actually one question, and maybe that would be a little bit more technical. Um, but what would be one skill that can set apart one student that had this international experience that you can even put on maybe on your CV, on your resume? I think the, the ability to, to be at ease, comfortable, right, in, 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 in any situation... And also, this teaches you to be respectful of other cultures. I would, I would also add, I think, like, a lot of people that have that experience to be out of their home country, <coughs> they develop this acceptance of diversity and understanding and open-minded that actually in the personal and professional world or life allows you to do so much because <coughs> you're pretty open Absolutely. to do a Absolutely. lot of things. And, and, and on a personal side, you, this is what I taught my, my children, right? Uh, being open-minded, being accepting, uh, being understanding of, of different... The fact that w the way you do things is not necessarily the right, necessarily the only right way to do it. Yeah, right? and on this line, I would say that even listening is very important mm -hmm. in the sense that when you listen to the other person and you're open listening to the other person... That brings you to, as we were saying, like reduce words, but even like more in concrete, like reduce the conflicts that there might be oh in yeah. a team uh, business uh, and uh, an assignment that you have to do. So just like uh, being open, that like <coughs> your mentality is not the only right one can be, but it's not the only right one would be. Absolutely. And I'm sure you have um, noticed that there are some students from certain cultures that are um, more reserved. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and that is often the, a cultural thing, right? Yes. And, and, and we have to respect that. We have to understand that. Uh, whereas others, you know, Americans are much more, you know, uh, at <laughs> ease, uh, as we say in English, in your face. You know, they, they <laughs> don't hesitate to, uh, to say things, to speak up, even to the professor. And, and uh, you know, maybe you can complain. But whereas I, but I would consider it like a challenge for the other person to let the other individual person in front of you to speak up to try to raise their voice uh, and of course like with uh, without uh, being in, um, still tolerant to, to the I other person. I would say being encourage the other yeah. people to you know <coughs> develop different other skills that could be better to you know be 
better in the professional world. Right. So for those who are permaculture where you're very talkative, learn to listen, learn to be patient. We right? Italians, <laughs> for example. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I'm from Peru, <laughs> and I think, like, I'm, like, loud all the time. And mm-hmm. it's, like, a thing that has happened a lot with uh, my Hispanic friends or Latin American friends. Like, we are loud, and we just, like, I don't know. I like, heard several times, like, wh- why people ask me, like, why do you shout all the time? It's like, I'm <laughs> sorry. I think that this is like my tone mm-hmm. of voice. Yeah. Um, but I it, I completely agree that this is like a cultural aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something. Uh, so it's things that you, that you learn. And I think that we learn as much outside of the classroom than we do inside the classroom. Yeah. And that makes the whole... You know, during COVID, it was very frustrating because a lot of the students, for, for obvious reasons, were online. And the experience yes. is, is just so, so different. It's not it the is. real halt experience. Yeah. You know? I feel lucky that when I was <coughs> doing my bachelor, it was, there was no COVID. I think Liddy, yeah. like on the few, last few years, like unfortunately I went through COVID and she had to do virtual. I, I could not imagine doing yeah. a virtual class. I would say that my experience for the bachelor was completely different because unfortunately I've experienced all my university, uh, bachelor university online. I studied in Italy and uh, Italy, I'm sure that she, uh, well you all know that was the country that was heated the most in Europe, or at least was the first one that was heated. So it, it took us by shock. So at the very beginning, everything started to shut down for one week, two weeks, one month, three months. And then, like, you, we, we always saw, like, this unf- uncertainty of the future, um, which kind of shaped all of us because, like, yeah. we were 18 till 20 years old. When you're trying at that age to make um, programs, plans for the right. future. So when I, get, when I got this experience uh, of HALT, at the very beginning, I was like, Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, traveling in six different campuses, in possibly like could have studied in three different continents. Correct. So to me, at the very beginning, it was like, wow, is this even possible? <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay, you know what? Yes, I'm definitely going to do it. I'm going to grab it with two hands. There you go. And uh, <laughs> here we are, involved uh, in any possible way with yeah. HALT uh, to come back to all that experience. And definitely I could say, completely different mm-hmm. as like Dean Frederick was saying like having it um, a class class in person classes like uh, speaking with the teacher speaking with your classmates as well recording a podcast here, here <laughs> teaches you <laughs> as much as uh, um, academics which by the way I love like the courses that we yeah, do even so have here <laughs> there was an interesting um, um, aspect of teaching because during COVID we at HALT were teaching hybrid, so um, we were open, uh, but of course classrooms were small, I mean the, the classes were smaller because half of the students Correct. were online, and those who were in class uh, had masks on and so did I. So you would learn to, uh, to, 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 to know the students with the masks on and so on, and all of a sudden we had the r- also to take them off and I realized that some of the students I could not recognize oh, because you know, I knew them with a the mask. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. Kind of relearn, right? To <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so. actually, I wanted to ask, like, on this uh, line, um, y- we HALT teaches uh, hybrid as well. And it's um, very hard, as we were saying, <coughs> but it's even required sometimes to work uh, digitally, like rem- remote work. Um, so does HALT even teaches on uh, on that level, like uh, with this uh, hybrid uh, aspect and courses? So um, we we took the decision last year when 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 COVID um, um, didn't really go away, but it was yeah. much less, uh, you know, was control problem. Was yeah, um, not to offer online or COVID unless um, we were offering uh, some electives. But all the core courses were in person only, uh, so we made this choice not to uh, teach in a hybrid format, uh, except for 
are we have a part time MBA program which is uh, which is hybrid actually correct um, um, and there are a few otherwise there are a few electives but by and large our decisions decision was to be in person because again we feel that the halt experience is an in person experience yeah I, I I would agree with that so we were talking about like what was happening before and what's happening right now. Um, how do you see hold in the next five years? I am extremely excited about, um, as I said, what, how we have evolved over the past uh, 10, 15 years and um, how we're going to continue to evolve. Um, we, um, wh what's happened besides the growth of, of the institution is that we've also matured. We've mm -hmm. become much more rigorous. We are now triple accredited. Um, we are have our faculty engaging in a lot of academic research. And this is a path to our rise. You know, 20 years, because the HALT is turning 20 years this year, right? So it's Ooh. a very, <laughs> very young institution, particularly to our compared to our neighbors here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, yes. right? Uh, we are uh, very, very young, and we have a lot to learn. Um, and we also need to do a lot to get our name out, and it's, it's, it's already out there. We have about 30,000 alumni. That's uh, why we are here and as well. Well. <laughs> and, and, and you as well. Right. Spread the good word. Uh, spread your experience and so on. So uh, uh, this, is, this is continuing, and I think that... Um, we're probably not going to grow as fast in the past five years, but we are certainly going to become, continue to become much more rigorous in our programs, and we are going to really become, as we already are, cutting edge in many ways, but we will continue to increase that competitive advantage uh, that is going to really become very well known, I think, across the world. That's amazing. So that's how we want to invite everyone Yes. To be part of HALT. Uh, That's because right. we love HALT. That's right. And, and just one more question so we can, can wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, could you think about one question that you would like to do to our next guest? And that would be how it closes. To our next guest. Correct. And you don't know who it's going to be. I don't know who it's going to be. Who could it be? But, um, the question, let me think for a couple Take of seconds. Time. Yes, of course. That it's even like our audience I can think about. And, and uh, you can put that on the comments. Yeah. Maybe. What do you want to hear about next time? I think the question I would ask is, what would you like um, HALT to accomplish to improve your HALT experience? Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, and, uh, good question. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, then. Well, thank you so much. Thanks to you for it inviting me. It was a pleasure uh, hosting you. I, I, I have to say that you are uh, totally in the spirit of HALT. and, and, <laughs> and uh, We embrace the <laughs> HALT <laughs> DNA. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you do. And uh, this is wonderful because I know how busy it is. But this is exactly what we're talking about, right, yes. is to... Um, Use the little time that you have outside of the classroom to, to do something, right, that is exciting, where you're inviting people, sharing, asking them to share their experience, and I think all, and then, and then sharing the entire, right, all these podcasts so people can learn more about our institution. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We're going to see you around, of course. Absolutely. I'll um, be here. Oh, well, thank you, everyone who's watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.